Are you wondering what software you should be learning for architecture in 2021? Well, today that's what we're looking at and these are my top picks for 2021 on what's gonna give you the highest quality design products, uh, design solutions, design workflows, and what's worth learning, honestly. So hey, if we're just meeting, my name is Tim Halverson. This is Sevenfold Design Technology, where we unlock your creativity through the power of design technology and architecture. So let's go ahead and dive into the presentation and get to it. All right, so there is a lot of software in the architecture software tool chest. And honestly, this is just what came to the top of my mind. And it's a bit overwhelming. I mean, if you just take a look at this list, you've got a wide range and honestly I've used and tried to learn every single one of them in my time so far and you know there's a lot going on and I'm still you know only a few years really into this journey but what I've learned after studying <clears throat> all these different software platforms and starting to really use them um, I was getting overwhelmed and realizing that you know what you, there's no way we need all of these. We need to understand what the purpose of each is and what we're getting out of it. But hey, I'm here to help you out and navigate this crazy technology landscape for architecture. So taking a look at this list one more time, we're gonna focus in on just the key ones that I feel are gonna be most useful for your workflow and architecture today. And then later we can expand on how to leverage different ones. But for now, we're gonna stay focused on the core. And looking at that, the main two that you're gonna get the most mileage out of is Rhino and Revit. Both are being used for architecture modeling. Um, and honestly, Rhino is gonna give you a lot more options in terms of analysis and customization through Grasshopper. Grasshopper, in my mind, is the preferred uh, visual scripting interface. You can get a ton of value out of Dynamo as well, but if I had to pick one to learn first, I would learn Grasshopper. Um, and then you can do generative design analysis. We'll talk all about that in future videos, but generally it integrates directly with Rhino. Revit, you're gonna need to know for production level architectural drawing sets. And so you can do modeling at the beginning of a design, but it's, it is integrated and in, it's mostly used for drawing sets. But I use it for everything start to finish. Then when it comes to the process diagrams, communicating your design intent, things that kind of land in between um it'd be things like going powerpoints things that go on boards stuff like that you're going to be compositing those in illustrator and photoshop enscape is my preferred rendering software because it is real-time rendering but it has the ability to update dynamically with with your modeling software and rhino and revit but then also take it to a high level of detail and quality. It has the ability to support physically based rendering materials, so PBR, and I just love how it's so fast to iterate through different options, um, as opposed to doing sample renderings and needing render farms and all kinds of extra hardware for the other solutions. InDesign is next, that's gonna integrate. We use it all the time for RFPs, which is request for proposals. Um, doing interactive PDFs so you can embed hyperlinks, things like that. Um, board presentations, uh, whether that's for school or for um, pinups or presentations to clients, books, and anything for print. It's the best at large scale uh, print that's not for your drawing set, but you might be like 8.5 by 11 or 11 by 17 as um, a different deliverable to your client for different reasons. Bluebeam is the best PDF tool designed specifically for architects. And the reason it differentiates itself from like Acrobat, again, we're gonna go through details on all this, but the biggest thing is it has uh, collaboration tools that you can upload your PDFs to the cloud, it has a robust markup system to be able to track every single markup, make sure it's closed out and addressed. And then as you update your drawing uh, set, if a sheet, changes or design changes, you can start to track what is updating um, on a sheet by sheet basis. <clears throat> then up here on the top and uh, Dynamo as well is integrated automation for Revit. At the top here, I have a different color for the these tools. Miro, you may not have heard of, but it's an infinite whiteboard tool that again, you can put everybody at the same time in the same digital workspace to plan and strategize 
different workflows. Um, so definitely check check Miro out and we'll be covering all this again. I'll just keep reiterating that. Uh, Trello I use for task management. So if Miro is for planning, Trello is for actually doing the work and taking action upon that. <clears throat> Excel, you just gotta know it. Um, just data management, data sets, filtering, sorting, um, managing tables, doing simple financial planning, super useful, gotta know it. PowerPoint, it's presentations, easy, step by step. Uh, there's all kinds of presentation tools I've tried over the years. I've even, even tried InDesign for power for um, presentation based things, and I've used Miro for presentations, but you gotta know PowerPoint anyway. There's always gonna be the case where you're gonna be cut and pasting slides. And recently they have the ability to host slides on the cloud so you can dynamically collaborate with people. So it's just getting better all the time. It's not going away. Word, I love InDesign. It is my first choice, but you still got to know Word. And there's always going to be a case where you're doing research, doing a white paper, collaborating with somebody, and you're going to need to be able to edit a basic document in Word. And then one note. You're going to be able to cloud sync your notes across not only your devices, but your entire team. So definitely getting familiar with OneNote is super useful. All right. So we're going to just take a look at this one more time. And it is a bit of a mess, but I would say, where do you begin? Well, I think of these in four distinct buckets. All right. So design, visualize, coordinate, and produce or productivity. So the first ones I would learn, Rhino and Revit with Grasshopper closely behind because Rhino, um, everything you can do in Rhino for the most part, you can assume you can do in Grasshopper. I know it's not technically true, but as you're just getting started, you basically can automate and create algorithms from anything you can do manually in Rhino, which is awesome. And um, Revit, you have to know for documentation purposes. So these tools land in multiple categories, but for the design, this is your kind of main tool chest. For visualizing, I would start with Enscape. Honestly, before even Illustrator, Photoshop, or InDesign. Um, the reason for that is because you can get a really good sense of materiality, which is a core competency of architects. And so the more you're dynamically interacting and seeing your designs, the better you're going to be designing and thinking about creating holistic, um, kind of watertight solutions rather than using Photoshop to kind of gloss over the edges and mask things away and pretend. You really should be thinking holistically about your designs. And so I think the real time rendering solution helps you visualize it most effectively and also makes you go back and design the model um, as clean as possible. Then for coordination, uh, Bluebeam, Rhino Inside, and Dynamo. Basically, if you don't know Grasshopper, you're not going to be any good in Rhino Inside because it's the same thing um, for, for many respects, just for simplicity. Um, Dynamo I'm going to be using to help streamline sheet automation, things like that. Bluebeam, like I mentioned earlier, coordinating the markups, making sure they're all addressed and picked up. And that's just seeing your design all the way through from start to finish. And then for productivity, I would start with Miro. There's a bunch of features under the hood that we're gonna unpack um, that just helps you organize and collect your thoughts. And the fact that it's not just a personal thing, but you can use it with a team, even better. And then I would layer in all the rest of these after that. But honestly, get familiar with all of these tools. You will be using them throughout your career. And even if not these specific tools, if they go away, these four buckets are pretty much always going to be there for how you work in architecture. So um, there may be better solutions that come down during your career, but the purpose of the software is going to be the same. And honestly, I'm hoping that we get to a place where we're delivering digital twins and PDFs start to become less and less, but it's still, there's always going to be a mechanism for communicating the design intent, and we'll talk more about that later. So here's just like an example of bringing it all together. So I've got a model here, and I wanna talk about my facade system. This prefabricated metal panel system, and we wanna ensure the quality of color, size tolerances, and organizing this assembly. Taking a closer look at that, you can see that there's a custom coloration for each panel, and that we can prefabricate that and start to systemize it so that it, it saves on budget. But how did I actually produce this slide? 
Well, the base model was done in Rhino. The rationalization in this custom way was done in Grasshopper. <clears throat> the Enscape was used to create just the rendering, no additional post-processing required. And then PowerPoint was used to animate all the overlays and annotations. So how I revealed it, even in this slide, all done in PowerPoint. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna jump into a few minutes of live demo just to kind of peel back the curtain of what's going on. But honestly, if you're still here and you're excited about what's going on, definitely subscribe and hit the notification. We're gonna be producing all kinds of workflows addressing these different tools. And if you want a more structured environment, I highly encourage you to go back uh, go to the BIM Academy, bimacademy.sevenfold.io. And it should be kind of watermarked on the bottom of the screen. And that's gonna, you're gonna be able to track your progress, not only for the free content we're publishing here on YouTube, but there's opportunities for courses that we'll be publishing in future months and years. And yeah, super excited to start to demystify this landscape of technology for you. Prioritize what's important to be learning now and be able to keep growing in the architecture and be doing more and more successful designs throughout your career. So I'm gonna just take a few more minutes to peel back the curtain on a live demo. And let's exit this presentation. So here I am in Rhino, and I produced this in Grasshopper in about 15 minutes, just scripting something up. And here's, here's the script back here. And it's pretty small. Uh, we've covered workflows like this elsewhere on the channel. But for the most part, I'm basically colorizing these panels based off of an image. And then I'm using uh, this, this black and white image to control the offset of this bottom lip of each panel. And that's what's kind of creating this effect here. And if I go to um, showing the actual geometry, that's instantly going to update when I go back to Enscape. So you can see back here, I've actually got that geometry in place and I can start to navigate around this, but I've got a predetermined view that's saved in Rhino with Enscape. So if I come to that and I launch Enscape, I can fix where my perspective is, if it's an isometric or not, and I can start to render out multiple different passes and layers um, to help control what that, what's what's showing up there. So what's cool is um, if I just hide some of this information, I can basically, it'll automatically update in Enscape as I'm going. Um, so yeah, it's really kind of exciting. We can unpack this script in future lessons, but I basically just have the ability to increment design option. And then I can change out this image, which was controlled in Photoshop. So if I wanted to like, swap out an image with a different color. I could just export that and override the image that's being referenced in the algorithm. And then that's gonna refresh in the algorithm here and instantly gonna propagate into the design model over here. So once I'm ready to actually bake out my solution and I can do the same for the, the black and white here if I wanna sculpt that a little bit more. And I can basically just come over here and bake that out. There's also ways to add controls to make it more easily accessible so these things aren't buried throughout the algorithm. You can control that. And then when I'm ready, I can just uh, kind of put that away for a second. I can turn off one of my previous options here and just look at the new option. And you see, because I incremented that, I can build out sub layers for that facade option and control it. And then instantly you can see it's actually already updating back in Enscape. So it's ready to render. So if I just wanted to hide that, that surface, if I just isolate this surface, that's actually the, the surface that is driving the entire design. So I can actually model this, work with the shape of it, change it, all that kind of stuff, and it's gonna re-propagate through the script and then be able to bake out an updated surface. But if I just type show, and then take this and just type hide, you can see right away it's, um, it's gonna be updating here in Enscape. And once I'm ready, I can basically, in Enscape, I can just you know, quickly change the shadow. Um, and once I'm ready, I can basically just export these images as PNGs and layer those into PowerPoint. And what's exciting is once you're in PowerPoint here, 
um, each of these is its own kind of layer that I've got controlled and animated. So I'm just going to back that up for a second. So both of these are on their own layer. Because it's a PNG, it's got that transparent look. And then I can just overlay these different kind of shapes and this, all this stuff is happening in PowerPoint. And the best part about PowerPoint is I can animate that just like this and really step through the story of what I'm trying to tell through my assembly, through my coloration, through the system I'm looking at. Whatever I can think of, I can start to use that together to tell the bigger picture of what's going on. Hey, so thanks. Have you, have you enjoyed what's going on? I hope you enjoyed this lesson talking about some of my favorite tools that I'm using pretty much every single day in architectural practice to produce diagrams and renderings and modeling and using those all in different ways. Like I mentioned, we're gonna be covering each one of these in detail, both on the YouTube channel for free, as well as at the BIM Academy. And feel free to check out the link in the video. You can see bimacademy.7fold.io and looking forward to doing some more live streams too so if you want to submit uh, ideas that's a great forum to bring your questions and we can have a live conversation around what you are looking to do what you're looking to accomplish and how you want to start to integrate that into your workflow there's so many different ways you can take this i know it's a bit overwhelming but that's my list again here's a quick kind of rundown of each of those softwares and um yeah I hope you are feeling empowered and excited to be getting into more design solutions and architecture. Definitely uh, check back. We'll be posting so many more videos in the coming weeks and months. And uh, hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, um, and hit the little notification so that you don't miss when we release fresh content. So once again, thank you so much. Stay curious, my friends, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.